1963, Martin Luther King spoke those very words in an attempt to inspire and motivate a nation into believing that all things are possible. Mr. Contest Chair, ladies and gentlemen, I too have a dream. I dream of a time when once again our children can ride the school bus without fear of persecution or harassment. I dream of a time when children can sit in a classroom and focus on their studies instead of contemplating how they will make it from this class to the next class without being bullied or having their head smashed into a locker. Ladies and gentlemen, I dream of a time when children like Matea Parsons will be remembered for her great accomplishments as she crosses the stage on the day of her graduation instead of for the circumstances surrounding her violent tragic death. For those of you who are not aware, Retea Parsons was a beautiful young 17-year-old girl from Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, merely a two-hour drive from where you are seated here today, who, although it is still under investigation, it is believed she was sexually assaulted by four young men, one of whom took a picture and posted it on the internet for the entire school to see. After months of cyberbullying, Retea could stand it no longer, and so in desperation ended. But she was not the only one. In fact, the United States did a study. There were over 800,000 attempted suicides in North America alone in one year. That's the same population of this entire beautiful province of New Brunswick. And for our friends and fellow Toastmasters from the United States, that's every living person in the city of Boston in one year. If those numbers are not staggering enough, 83,000 of these were children or young adults, just like the tape. I ask you to take a moment to reflect on what I'm about to say. In the time that it has taken me to begin this presentation today, a child or young adult has attempted to or successfully taken their own life. Why? Why would anyone with so much to live for, so much to look forward to, decide to end their life before it truly even begins? Is it because they're broken up with their boyfriend or girlfriend? Do they find their schoolwork too difficult? Maybe they've got uncontrollable acne and they're just afraid to show their face in public. Or do they hate their parents? Yes, these are all reasons. Reasons for a child to be angry, to be frustrated, and to lash in, but not to take their own life. In my opinion, the only reason that this scene repeats itself day after day after day is because of bullying. ABC recently did a news article. It stated there are 160,000 of our North American children that cannot go to school on a daily basis because they're being bullied. My question to you is, why? Why isn't anyone doing anything about it? Fairness, I have to admit, our government, they did something. They did a study, a 218-page document filled with facts and figures and statistics costing hundreds of thousands of your taxpayers' dollars. Their findings? We do, in fact, have a problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the problem and the most frustrating part of this entire document as if its findings and recommendations are found on one page in six paragraphs. Summarized, it reads, we believe these findings to be factual and accurate and recommend continued study of this and of course, further review. They speak of facts and statistics. The fact is that in the seven minutes it will take me to complete this presentation this evening, Four children will have attempted to or successfully taken their own lives. And three of them, three of them will be in direct relation to bullying. I must apologize for my rudeness this evening in not introducing my co-presenter. This is Jordan Alexander Gallant. He was my nephew. And he loved to laugh. He loved to play the guitar. 
He loved working on old cars with his father. He was one of the best sketch artists in his school. He was shy and awkward, somewhat inquisitive. He and Retea were the same age. But Jordan could not be with us this evening because he too was bullied. He was bullied into believing he was worthless. He was bullied into believing that this world would be a better place without him. And then finally, only two weeks before his graduation, he was bullied into taking his own life. I am his voice. Please, tell me you're listening. This must not go on. This cannot go on. I ask of you, no, I beg of you, to be a voice for those of us who are not being heard and for those of us who can no longer speak. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan was my nephew. Tomorrow, it could be yours. It could be your son. It could be your daughter. They could be your grandchildren. Tomorrow, this could be a loved one of anyone in this room, but it need not happen. Today, within these walls, a voice has been heard. And now we ask that you join your voice in becoming a cry for justice so loud and deafening that it resonates to the four corners of the earth. And finally, finally, bring an end to bullying. 